Welcome and welcome back everybody, Tia here, and in today's video I'll be doing a solo playthrough of Harvesting 12 by designer Alex Burrisford. This is a small 18 card micro game and during the playthrough I will be giving a tutorial about how the game is played. At the end of the video be sure you stick around for the review and my thoughts about the game in general. As always, if you've been around on the channel and you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that down below for more board game content. And if you enjoy the video, please give it a like. It really does help out the channel and helps to get this video out to a wider audience. Without further ado, let's get started. So here is a game of Harvesting 12 set up and ready to play. During the game, we're going to be acting as a farmer who is scrambling to harvest up all of their crops before the impending storm hits. So I took the liberty of setting up. In order to do that, you're first going to remove the switch card from the deck that will be included in every game. Then out of the remaining 17 cards, you're going to shuffle it together with 11 randomly drawn cards and place them out in a four by three grid. The remaining cards can go off to the side. They won't be used for this particular game. On each of your turns, you are going to choose one of the cards from the grid to activate. When activating a card, you are going to be removing an additional card as well. Now, in order for an arrow to remove an additional card, you it will have to be directly adjacent to where the arrow is pointing, so there can't be any gaps in between, which would allow you to remove an additional card in that way. And you can only remove exactly two cards in this way. So for example, if there were no cards in either of these positions, I could not activate this card and remove it. Some of the cards instead will have text referencing a particular position. So we have positions one through four, five through eight, and nine through 12. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump into our first turn here. And let's see, we do have the power of the switch card, we'll, which will allow us to, when we activate it, swap any two cards and then remove one card from uh, the right or the left of it. So let's see, this card down here right now is pretty inaccessible unless we use this card, which lets us also remove the 12th card. I think we're gonna go ahead and activate this uh, pumpkin here and remove this vegetable carrot, I think. All right, so we'll take these two and set them off to the side. All right, for our next move, I can see that this card can be activated in a lot of ways. These two are somewhat dependent on each other. These two can go together. These two can go together. These two can go together and then we can swap. So I think we should be okay. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, remove, uh, we'll do these two cards. I'm gonna activate this. I think it's squash. I don't really know my vegetables all that well. <laughs> and this onion, that one I do know, a red onion at that. Okay. And next up, let's, ooh, I didn't neglect this white onion or yellow onion. I'm not sure <laughs> here. Um, so what we should do next is I believe this is an artichoke and some mystery vegetable that I don't know. Those of you who are more vegetable aficionados, please let me know in the comments. So we'll activate this artichoke and remove this vegetable right adjacent to it. I think next we'll go ahead and remove the tomato and this vegetable. Is this a turnip or is this a turnip? I'm not really sure. <laughs> All right. I love the puzzly nature of this game. Um, the designer, Alex, also designs puzzles, which is just so cool. If you haven't checked out Dual Brain Games yet, he has a YouTube channel too. If you like my content, you'll definitely enjoy his. So be sure you check it out and subscribe to him as well. Um, and let's see, so for our Switch card, we can definitely do this if we think about it carefully. So this one allows us to move the fourth card. Uh-oh, but then these two cards don't interact. Oh no, and they can't point to each other either. So I think we did need to use the switch card a little bit sooner. Because if we swap these two, we could remove the fourth and that, but, oh wait, no, that will work. So we're going to use the switch card to swap these two cards. Then we remove the switch card itself since it's activated and one card to the left or right. There's only a card on the left, so we'll remove that. And then if we activate this onion, we'll remove both of these as well. So we have successfully harvested all 12 of our crops before the storm and have won the game. So there you have it. That is a solo playthrough of Harvesting 12. 
And I have to say, when I first heard the name of this game, I was a little concerned um, because I thought 12, does that mean there are only 12 cards? But no, you do get the full complement of 18 cards. And that's the first thing I really enjoy about this game is the replayability. So the variations of the cards within the grid, as well as which of the 11 cards, in addition to the swap card you get from game to game, make it so that you're doing similar mechanics, but each card interacts with the other ones around it a little bit differently. So it does feel fresh and new each time you play it for that reason. Um, in addition to that, I would say that it's really interesting with a lot of these smaller micro games, there's a tendency for there to be some luck of the draw. So some of the games based on the cards and the way they're laid out might be impossible to win based off of the starting positions. And I know that Alex really strived to make sure that regardless of which cards you have in a game, regardless of how they're laid out, with the help of that really nifty swap card, it is always possible for you to have a winning solution. Now, I personally haven't gone through and tested every single combination myself, but I trust him when he says that. And I think that's so fantastic that he went out of his way to make sure that it's a game that provides some challenge, maybe based on your starting layout, but that is winnable. So this is a really awesome option if you're into puzzly games. I know I did a review of Fuchin Island um, by Scott Alms from Button Shy Games. And if you're into that sort of kind of vibe, this is a really great addition to that or alternative if you're not really into reading all the fine text. I think the graphic design and the layout of the cards is really aesthetically attractive. Um, and this builds off of the mechanics of his previous game, 13, with a little bit more of a twist in terms of uh, an update on the theme and kind of the layout of the cards. So this is a really great one. It's quick, easy to learn, easy to teach, to get to the table. You can play multiple games back to back and it's a really great way to just keep your brain engaged during those small breaks in your day. So if you like puzzly micro games, definitely don't pass up an opportunity to check out Harvesting 12. That's all the time we have for today. Again, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now and leave a like on the video as well. It really does help out. Thank you again so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye. And the best part, this board game is bunny approved.